Welcome, everybody, to a new episode of the Big Sky Now podcast. As always, I'm your host, Josh Amy, with my panel, John, Fritz, Mark, and Ian. Not a whole lot to get into this week, uh, looking at Saturday's matchups, as there is only three um, games on this week. So we'll try to go into further detail about each one of those games. Starting off, uh, Montana, coming off a bye last week, now faces Northern Colorado with a chance to possibly correct some of the issues they've had on defense. How do you think Montana can use this game to kind of get right with Northern Colorado being a team that struggles and move forward for the rest of the season with maybe figuring out some things on defense, Fritz? I think the bye week came at a good time for him. And uh, um, I I know when he used to be able to go to practice, um, Bobby Ock usually had a rookie bowl uh, where all the guys that are red shirts would, would match up and play a contact scrimmage. And uh, this year, I think he better maybe find out if a few of those guys can can play. Um, they've had a hard time tackling people. Um, they've had a hard time finding the right pieces for the three three five. That's a great defense when when you when you've got the dudes, which they showed last year. Um, the year before started out good, and then they started having some injury problems and kind of got gashed pretty good as the year went on. That's twenty twenty two. Right now. Uh, the defense is kind of the weak link, and and they need to shore things up. And one thing uh, Bobby Hawk is a stickler about is fundamentals. So I'm sure they spent this whole time working on tackling and getting people to be in the right spots in that three three five. Um, the bad news is they got to play the team to beat the team to beat them. We were state lost to Northern Colorado just a couple weeks ago, so Northern Colorado is suddenly a little more dangerous than they used to be. Yeah, I don't know how much the Northern Colorado beating Weaver State was was a fluke or the hangover for Weaver, like you like to say, Fritz. But um, I, I do think that this is probably the best opponent that they could have asked for out of the bye week. Um, and to even get it on the road, I think, is a, probably a better opportunity for them, being able to you know, get their offense rolling away from home. You don't have the, the, the crowd there for the defense also. So um, I, I think... First off, they just need to make sure that the running game stays going. That's been the strongest part of their offense this year. Um, I imagine Logan Fife is going to be starting again. So that opens up the passing game a little bit more, I think, than Keely Ayat. But uh, both quarterbacks are capable in that regard. Um, and defensively, yeah, I just think that the secondary needs to, you know, not allow anything over the top and tackling. Just focus on fundamentals this week. Don't give up the big play. Uh, yeah, I just think that this is kind of a perfect game out of the bye for him. Yeah, I'd be curious to see how they how they come out. Sometimes you have a bye and you're refreshed and you're clicking, and sometimes you're a little rusty because you haven't played for a, a couple of weeks. So um, either way, I mean, they, like you guys said, they got they got to figure out their defense. I mean, it, it might not matter this week, but it's going to matter um, down the line. Yeah, I was also just kind of seeing to how they approach defense during the bye week and kind of how they come out uh, out of it. Um, had a decent defensive game a couple of weeks ago against uh, Northern Arizona, uh, held them to around like 300 yards and 20 points. But obviously they want to get further away from those uh, Weber State and uh, Eastern Washington games. So we'll see uh, see how that shakes out on Saturday. Um, another game that could have some big conference play implications is the Sacramento State heading to Pocatello, where it's always tough to play. Can Sacramento State build off their win last week, or do you think Idaho State bounces back after that tough loss they had last week, John? Yeah, this one to me actually kind of seems like one of the probably the most interesting matchup of this week. Um, both teams have kind of had issues with defense, especially in the past few weeks. Uh, Idaho State, as we've mentioned before, they can throw the ball well. And Sac State's given up a lot of passing yards in their last few games. Um, maybe not so much yards, I guess, but more completions. Um, they gave up, let's see, NAU that went 21 to 25 with Ty Pennington. Um, Vesperis went 15 to 17 when they played Eastern. And then Munoz was 25 of 38, but had three touchdowns last week. So. Um, you know, Kobe Tracy's thrown for over 1,800 yards for the Bengals this year. Uh, so if Idaho State can get their offense rolling, I definitely think they have a chance. As for Idaho State's defense, they've given up 28 points in every single game that they've played against a D1 opponent this year. Um, of course, just two of those are wins. So they're going to need to try their best to shut it down. But that's something that hasn't happened this year. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, they're kind of – Idaho State's a little bit of a – kind of a head scratcher. I mean, they, they played Montana State pretty tough at home, about as well as Montana State's been played other than New Mexico. You know, then they, then they lose at home to Portland State, which is Portland State's only win on the year. Then they, you know, maybe should have or could have beat Northern Arizona last week, and that would have been their first win in Flagstaff since 1984, which I'm, I'm sure uh, Fritz was probably early in his career covering the Grizz back then. And <laughs> um, as for the rest, I don't know where the rest of you guys probably weren't even around then. We were just we were just thoughts. <laughs> okay, <laughs> about 15 years before me, so. <laughs> So anyway, I mean, you would think Sac State being a little more well-rounded well could go into pokey and take care of business, but you, yeah, you never know. You don't, you don't know. Yeah. Uh, it just kind of depends uh, which Idaho State shows up on uh, Saturday. Uh, and I do think they're going to be able to hit some, uh, some big plays uh, in the past game. We've seen them have some pretty explosive outings so far this season. Um I, I think back uh, the last couple of weeks, they've been involved in quite a number of uh, shootouts. So um, it just kind of depends how Sac State's defense holds up against that. Obviously, they've been pretty shaky, especially the last couple of weeks uh, once they've entered conference play. Mm. Yeah, I kind of want to give Idaho State the the edge just because they're home. Um, it's a tough one to call. I, I think it might be one of the, another one of those first one to 42 wins kind of games. And if you're wondering where I was in 84, I was watching the Grizz blow a 21-7 halftime lead to the Bobcats, who then went on and won the national title in 84. I was in college. I was about to say, how do you even remember that? But <laughs> well, was, I guess, I'll, I guess I'll if you were there and you were experiencing it, then yeah, that's different. <laughs> Um, all right. Um, another, uh, the other game that we have slated on the schedule is Eastern against Idaho. They face off in the late game. What gives in this game with Eastern having such a high powered offense and Idaho kind of being known for their defense? What do you think prevails in this game? And, and how does the Idaho's defense slow down Eastern's um, offense? Idaho didn't really slow them down last year. Right? Um, it was kind of, it was a shootout and they just outscored them. Um, the caveat there was kind of Eastern. They didn't know who Eastern's quarterback was going to be coming in and it ended up being a guy who did a lot of quarterback runs as opposed to Vesperis, who's more of a scrambler. So they kind of had to figure out during the game how to defend that. So you kind of give them a, a little bit um, more, you know, a little bit of a credit for that. Uh, this year, Idaho's defense is better this year than last year. And I think they kind of know a little bit more about what they're going to get from Eastern. So maybe Idaho doesn't have the as an explosive an offense as they did last year, but it should be enough against that defense. I mean, Eastern, like you know, as I said, Eastern isn't stopping anybody. So um, it, I, I still think Idaho wins. It could be high scoring, and but I, I, I still think Idaho wins that game. Yeah, uh, I do think this game's going to be pretty similar to last year's game uh, where it's kind of back and forth and a bit of a shootout. But when I just kind of look at both position groups, I think, or both sides of the ball, I think Idaho's defense is just kind of a better unit than Eastern's offense is. Just kind of looking through, especially through uh, big sky play, um, Eastern's offense is only kind of about middle of the pack in uh, statistics, whether it's running or passing. So um, I think I'm just going to side with the the better side of the ball in that matchup and go with Idaho's defense probably get a couple of key plays that really allow them to uh, walk away with this win. I tend to think Idaho's front seven will will kind of do what UC Davis did last week. Kind of, you know, Eastern showed how dangerous was when it was able to get the running quarterback running in and uh, the throwing quarterback throwing so well, 15 or 17, whatever it was the game before. Um, UC Davis uh, just made them one-dimensional. They, they didn't really let them run, and uh, pretty soon it was 20 to 9, and they had to throw a lot more, and I think Idaho's front seven is probably going to hold up pretty good against the running quarterback, running attack of, of Eastern. And uh, that'll be the difference. And to piggyback off of that, too, once they do shut down the run, if that is the case, then that front seven can also get a lot of pressure in. So, um, yeah, I think Idaho's defense is going to be probably the the controller of the game. Um I, I do think, though, that it, it it will have some points. I'm not thinking a shootout. We're not going to score every single time. But uh, I, I think 
it, it might take the you know high thirties to win this one for Idaho. Um, we'll see if the offense can can get there. All right, that was the only three games that we have slated on the schedule for this week, but we are going to get into my favorite portion of the show, which is our picks. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a tie atop the leaderboard. I think Fritz has been holding it down for seven straight weeks. I think after week one, it's been Fritz atop the leaderboard now. But Ian went 5-0 and last week. So did John and I to give credit for credit where it's due. <laughs> but... Fritz and Ian are now tied atop the leaderboard with a 55 and 14 record. So, Ian, the floor is yours. Kick us off with your picks for this week. All righty. Uh, we'll start off with uh, what I think most of us are going to be in agreement on, uh, taking Montana over Northern Colorado. Uh, I'm going to go with Sac State over Idaho State. I just think that they needed a little bit more than uh, just kind of with their expectations that they had coming into the season. Um, so I'm going to go with the Hornets in that one. And then I was I kind of wanted to pick Eastern a little bit, but the more we talked about it, then Idaho's defense and just kind of hoping to they're hoping to get back to four more than uh, what they put on the field the last couple of weeks. I'm going to go with the Vandals in that one. All right. Fritz, you're up next. OK, well, I'll go with Montana as my uh, my road winner over northern Colorado down in Greeley. And uh, I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to give uh, Ian a chance to move ahead by picking Idaho State to beat Sac State. And then I'll stick with the Idaho Vandals over Easter. All right. Bart and John both made up a lot of ground. They're only one game or, excuse me, two games behind the leaderboard. So, Mark, uh, go ahead and kick us off. What do you got for your, your picks? All righty. I'm going to take Montana over Northern Colorado. And... The next one might be more of a kind of a wish pick. I'm going to take Idaho State to beat Sac State because I they 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 need a win. They need to to beat a good team. They need to put a game together and beat a good team. And I, and here, this is their chance at home. So I'm taking Idaho State, and I'm taking Idaho to beat Eastern. All right, John, it's on you. All righty. Well, I'm going to go with Montana as well on the road over Northern Colorado. Um, Idaho State and Sac State have been bouncing back and forth. I wrote down Idaho State, but I think I'm going to pick Sac State, get the win on the road. Um, and then just because uh, another one that's kind of tight, I'm going to go with Eastern and be different. I think the Eagles will get the win on the road. All right. That kind of throws a wrench into my plans because I'm I'm three games behind the leaderboard, so I need to make up some ground. And the I was going to base my picks based off of what Sacramento State and Idaho State went, but right now it looks like we got – Almost a even split um, with Fritz and Fritz and Mark picking Idaho State and John and Ian going with Sacramento State. I tend to go with California teams because uh, I was born there, which is probably the reason why I'm last in the leaderboard. But moving on, I'm going to pick uh, Montana to beat Northern Colorado. I'm going to stick with the Vandals to beat Eastern Washington. I think defense prevails in this one. Sac State and Idaho State. Let's see. Ian went Sac State. I'm going to go Idaho State. I'm just going to go with the home team. I'm probably going to regret that. Um, I've, I've, the three win Sacramento State has had, I picked two of those, right? So I should stick with them, but I'm going to go with Idaho State. I need to make up some ground as well. But that is going to wrap up this episode of the Big Sky Now podcast. Thank you for joining us. And as always, thank you to my panel, John, Fritz, Mark, and Ian for this episode. We'll be back next Tuesday to break down uh, the upcoming weeks as well as what happened over the three games slated for this Saturday. So thank you again for joining us. We'll see you next week. And until then, take care.